With Shang-Chi coming out last week, we had to take a crack at this shot right here because obviously. <laughs> We shot this one on green screen since we wanted to get as close to the actual vibe of the shot as we could. And for the wide shots, we shot both Josh and Justin as individual plates so that we could place them far enough apart in post, as well as giving us an easier way to have reactive lights on both of them, which wouldn't have been possible if they were both in the same shot together. So in each shot, the other actor that wasn't on camera would be controlling a light to give some movement in the color of their power. And we also just didn't have the space to do both of them. So this was the only way that we could do it. As usual, we're jumping into Adobe After Effects and we'll drop one of our shots into a new comp. We have multiple episodes on keying, so we're gonna skip that process here. Just check the notes for links to some of those episodes. For the glow on the toy prop rings, which the toy prop rings were these things from Target, which are very cheap looking, very plastic looking, and originally not at all what they ended up being. We just hacksawed them apart to give them something that they could be holding onto. And in the end, it it actually worked okay. But for adding a glow to those rings, we 2D tracked position and rotation. Using a null layer for each one, we created a solid layer and linked to one of the tracks with motion blur enabled. We're gonna mask a shape within the ring area, keyframe the mask if needed, and we're gonna apply a fractal noise effect, changing the contrast and brightness a bit, decrease the scale and animate evolution throughout the length of the shot to give this effect. Add a solid composite with the color set to black, then use a glow effect. We use Red Giant's optical glow from their VFX suite. Finally, we use an effect to change the color to match what the character's power effect will be and set the layer to screen. Once you're happy with the look, select the ring and null layer, right click and pre-compose. Then set the layer back to screen and link it to your actor layer. Repeat the whole process again with the shot of your other actor, this time changing the ring color to match their power effect. Now scale and reposition both actors to have them facing each other at a decent distance for the standoff. For the environment, we did originally think about using stock photos, but we decided to use this 3D model of a cave within Element 3D so that we had control over for camera placement as well as adding interactive lighting to match. And it was a really cheap model to get. We've also made an episode before on using Element 3D for CG environments. So we're gonna skip that process too. Link for that in the notes below as well. To add some faint shadows, we're gonna be using Red Giant's shadow plugin, changing the position and angle. Right now it's clipping since the dimensions of our layer end here, but unchecking clip to bounding box expands it beyond the border. We'll lower the opacity and soften to give us this, then copy and paste to job changing the position and angle. In the original Shang-Chi shot, when both characters pull apart, we see multiple floating rings in a row. Since it's a wide shot, they are pretty undefined, so we can quickly make these by copying one of the glowing ring layers and pasting them in the main comp. Delete any masks and reset the rotation, then use an ellipse mask for the outside of the ring, then another for the inside, setting it to subtract. It's best to rename this layer since we will have multiple copies. Move this into position, then duplicate and move closer to the center. In the fractal noise effect, you can change the evolution random seed to vary the pattern in each copy. Duplicate and move closer, changing the evolution seed again. Now, duplicate and move, renaming and changing the color for the other character. And you can copy and paste the color effect that we used last time. Do this two more times until we have a row of rings. They look like they remain pretty still throughout most of the original shot, but we do see at the beginning, they all start closer to the center center, so move to that frame where your actors have completed their sudden move and keyframe the position of each ring. Move to the first frame and change the position to have them all jumbled in the center. Select the last keyframe and press F9 to easy ease them. To make the ease more gradual, you can select these keyframes and go into the graph editor, stretching this bar to make the animation very fast in the beginning, then gradually come to a stop. For the main part of the superpower chord effects, we're going to be using our assets from our beams pack. Anyone who has our extended 
Extinction Pack are gonna have these assets too. If you don't have them, link for that in the notes as well. For the main body of the gold side though, we're gonna be using the Nebula asset. Drop it into the comp and set to screen. Move it in the timeline so that instead of the beam appearing, we have it constantly visible. Now we're gonna change the time to slow it down. We also chose to reverse this and we made it over five times slower and of course enabled frame blending. Move the anchor points to the starting area, then change position, rotation, and scale to have it fit within the floating rings. We can mask just this section to stay visible and feather it. To change the look, we're gonna add a tint making it black and white, then copy and paste the same glow and color effects that we used on the rings, changing the settings a bit to give us this. Link it to the gold ring in the center and enable motion blur. To have it stretch when the rings first spread out, we can just keyframe and scale them, then use the graph editor again and make the transition slow down gradually. To add some line details, we're gonna duplicate this and then replace it with the Phoenix main asset by holding the Alt key while dragging and dropping the file over the duplicate to replace it. Then we're gonna link this layer to the Nebula layer below and delete the scale keyframes from before. If you use the anchor point tool and shift click and drag, you can move the asset within its mass to find a different pattern or placement. And because the Phoenix asset already has warm colors, we're gonna lower the tint effect slightly to bring some of those redder tones back through. For the two chords going to his hands, duplicate both of these layers, changing their place in the timeline to not look like a copy and reposition. This time we're gonna rotate in the opposite way to have this area be over the hand ring and change the scale and rotation to connect the other end to the floating ring. Adjust the mask on both assets if needed, depending on how big or small you want this chord and delete any scale keyframes. We lowered the gamma and brightness of both assets slightly and used a bulge effect to make this area a little wider to match the asset to the left. Duplicate both again, moving in the timeline to look different and changing the position, rotation, and scale to connect to the other hand. There's more work to do here, but before we do, let's pause so we can thank our sponsor, Creative Live. Creative Live is one of the reasons film schools really aren't needed anymore. And you can find out exactly what I mean and check out my class at creativelive.com forward slash film riot and use the coupon code film riot 10 at checkout to save $10 off of a Creative Live subscription. Plus you can watch several of my lessons for free. But back when we even started Film Riot, the only real option to learn filmmaking was by going to film school, getting in a ton of debt and hoping that was worth it. But now you have great resources like this online. They have over 700 instructors, over 2000 classes and over 60,000 different lessons, 60,000. And these classes are taught by incredibly talented people like Will and Brooke Blair teaching film composing. And they have composed features like Green Room and Hold the Dark or Jim Denault teaching cinematography. And this is a cinematographer that is still working on shows like Yellowstone or has done features like Trumbo. And there's a massive variety of great filmmaking classes overall, like editing, film producing, directing actors, crowdfunding your film, how to distribute your film online. And again, I have my class on there as well. Mine's a bit of a filmmaking 101 class that covers the process from start to finish with over 15 hours worth of lessons. And you can watch a few of those lessons right now for free, but only for the next seven days. So go to the link below and use our code to check that out. I said it on the show plenty before, but I really wish this existed when I was first starting out. I never would have gotten into all that student debt. But again, jump over to creativelive.com forward slash film riot and use the code film riot 10 at checkout to save $10 off of a creative live subscription and watch those classes of mine for free. They're only free for all of you for the next seven days. So jump over to do that now. Links below. But jumping right back into it, right now, these are all static. But what we can do is unlink the two top Nebula assets from the golden ring layer and pre-compose these top four assets together. In their comp, add a new black solid to the background to remove any alpha areas. Back in the main comp, set the blending mode to screen, copy and place the two hand tracked nulls from the rings comp that we made earlier. Unfortunately, if you remember, we since scaled and repositioned the Josh ring comp layers, meaning these nulls no longer sync up correctly 
In retrospect, when we first pre-comped them, we could have duplicated them and linked these to the Josh layer when we altered the scale and position. But there's an easy enough fix to get these nulls lined up in the hands again. Create a new null and change the anchor point values. Because this is a 4K comp, we need to change our values to 1920 by 1080, then link the other two nulls to this new null. Copy the anchor position and scale from the actor footage and paste to the new null, which will align the hand tracks correctly. You can then delete this null. To link the cords to each hand, use the puppet pin tool and add a point for each hand as well as where they connect to the floating ring. Pressing the U key will display these puppet pins. Select the nulls and press the P key to show position, then use the pick whip next to each puppet pin to link to the corresponding null positions. Do the same for the third puppet pin with the position of the floating ring layer. Enable motion blur and now our cords stretch and track with all three points. For Justin, we also have electric beam assets that we can use. We liked glass main with these floating shapes, so we'll trim it to start at this frame. Because of Justin's hand positions, we don't need to split his beam into two separate cords, so we can just use one version for the whole thing. Set to screen and again change anchor point position, scale, and rotation to match your shot. We added a tint and a bunch of curve variations changing brightness and contrast, then copy pasted the color effect from the blue rings, lowering the brightness and gamma and making the blue a bit more of an electric aqua. We found some areas distracting, so drew a couple of masks set to subtract with some feathering. Lastly, we're gonna add turbulent displace. Turbulent displace turbulent displace. And we'll go with a low amount and keyframe the evolution to give us a little jiggle, a little, a little wiggle in our jiggle, you know? A little jiggle. Oh, yeah, no. <laughs> this section of the asset doesn't last long, so we'll duplicate it and then slide it over in time, keyframing the color vibrance, brightness, and gamma to fade in. We duplicated again and again, moving them in time to fill the length of the shot. To add some variety, we selected every other duplicate and flipped them vertically. Next, we used the ribbon beam asset to add some more electric details. We flipped it horizontally to change the direction of the electricity and added a tint plus curves again for contrast and a blue color, but with lower vibrance this time. We drew a mask to again subtract the core area, then duplicate the layer on this one, masking out the main body, just keeping the endpoints with a high feather. Overall, this asset feels too smooth and consistent for the Shang-Chi look, which is more steppy. So on the bottom copy, we made it three times slower, but with no frame blending. We used a fractal noise effect with high contrast and scaled up, set to multiply, keyframing the evolution to change rapidly so that some sections are visible and others aren't. It can feel a bit freeze framey, so we can use another bit of turbulent displace, turbulent displace, turbulent displace with animated evolution and offset to give it more life. You could try going through the different displacement options, for instance, horizontal displacement if you only want it going in certain directions. If you want some more random details, you can duplicate again and this time enable time remapping using a wiggle expression to have the asset jump to random points in time every few frames. And lower the fractal noise brightness to minimize the visible areas. Duplicate this as many times as you like, maybe changing the displacement or flipping the layer again to randomize them. Until finally, all together, we have this. Then we went through the same process we did with the gold cords, pre-composing all assets together and using a black background to remove any alpha. Copy and pasting the track nulls, the anchor, position, and scale properties to a control null to make them line up and then use the puppet pin tool to draw points. Link them to the null and floating rings, enable motion blur, and ended adding a glow effect, giving us this. For some other elements, we use this glass extra asset trimmed and reversed, placed in the center, as well as a few frames of this demon extra for a center flash. We masked around this Ultron asset to add some flickering elements and use the end of the demon main asset with these sparks, changing the color like with the previous asset to match. For some extra touches, we used a few of our energy pack assets, such as chaotic one and two colored blue and gold placed in the center. Masked energy throw assets on both sides for the initial cord stretch. Some added anamorphic energy around Justin's hand and along the beam and a faint scale energy leak acting a bit like a smoke burst. We pre-composed all of these together, including the nulls and floating rings, once again, setting the blending modes back to screen and using the puppet pin tool to make points at each floating ring, plus a couple closer to each actor. We 
can use a wiggle expression on each of these floating ring points to add some jiggle like we see in Shang-Chi. The reason for the pre-composing together was just to make it easier to have all the effects moving correctly with each other. Also with Josh's action, he moves back slightly, so we keyframed the puppet pin position of this floating ring to move in sync with him. In the original, they have these one frame lightning blasts in different directions. We will make these using a black solid set to screen and the advanced lighting effects, keyframing the angle and length of these strikes differently on each frame. Add a fractal noise set to multiply to add some detail and like other layers, we used a glow and color effects again. And this is how it looks solo. For some environment light interactions, you can use a masked adjustment layer and add a color effect to match or because the environment is CG, we can use 3D lights and position them to be around the scene to match the effects. You can see in Shang-Chi that a lightning strike causes a ground blast. So we used an action essential two asset to replicate this. There's a bunch of other things that you can do such as adding light sweeps to the actors or keyframing the shadow directions to match the flashing lights. And like usual, we add final touches like more glows, especially for a few frames to replicate the bright Shang-Chi flash and some lens stock footage and textures over bright areas. And the last thing that we've done is add a camera shake giving us this. That's it for today, and if you haven't seen it, check out the version of this effect that our friends over at FX Home did inside of HitFilm. We'll put a link to that in the notes below for you to check out. And if you're not subscribed, make sure you do that and hit the bell so you're notified when we put out new content. And until next time, don't forget to write, shoot, edit, repeat.